I'd like to discuss the effective index method in more detail because it's really powerful. Remember, if we have a waveguide that looks like this, so this is the cross section where this center region has a higher effective refractive in index than this lower region, we can simplify it with the effective index method to something that looks like this. So how do we go ahead and actually do this? We start by applying Maxwell's equations, and specifically the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions we'll apply are that the perpendicular component of the magnetic flux and the electric displacement are continuous. The second thing is that the tangential components of the electric field and the magnetic field are also continuous. The next thing we can do is we can solve the wave equation. The wave equation essentially says del squared of the electric field plus epsilon r of x comma y k naught squared e equals zero. This e is the electric field. k naught is the free space wave number. And epsilon r of x and y represents the spatially varying permittivity. It's allowed to vary in x and y for our problem, but it does not vary in z. And so what this allows us, what the effective index method allows us to do is to separate our problem into a y component, which is essentially our slab waveguide, and into an index varying guide in the x direction. So let's talk specifically about how to do that. The solutions to the wave equation are of the form, and here I'm right solving for the electric field, uh, E equals A hat, so that's a direction, and then here we have a squiggle of y, and then semicolon x, and then psi of x e to the minus j beta z. So let's think about the terms that I have here. This beta, that's the propagation constant. A hat is a unit vector that represents the polarization. This is actually the transverse mode pro profile solving for y. And psi is actually the lateral field distribution. So what we can do is we can substitute into the Helmholtz equation and we can separate into the lateral and the transverse parts. So let's go ahead and write this down. This is 1 over psi and then here we have the second derivative of psi with respect to x plus, and then 1 over this variable, and then the second derivative of this variable with respect to y, and then plus, here we have k naught squared epsilon r of x comma y minus beta squared equals zero. OK, so now let's go ahead and split this into the components for the transverse field and also the lateral field. So the transverse y-directed field can be described as follows. So it's going to be the second derivative of this variable with respect to y, and then plus, here we're going to have k naught squared epsilon r of x comma y minus beta squared effective of x and then multiplied by this variable equals zero. We can do the same thing for the lateral or x-directed field. And as you can see, being able to do this greatly simplifies our problem. So here, we have the second derivative of psi with respect to x. Plus, and then here, we're going to have beta squared effective minus 
theta squared psi equals zero. So we can go ahead and think about a typical y solution. So a typical y solution is as follows. Essentially, this variable as a function of y is equal to, and then we're going to have two cases. So we're going to have the case of, of essentially where you're outside the region that guides. So we have AE, which is a, essentially a constant, and then cosine, and then here, this is going to be kappa y, where y in this case is going to be less than or equal to d over 2. So this is the case where you're actually inside the high index layer, not actually outside. And then outside the layer, it's going to be equal to BE. Again, this is a constant. And then exponential of minus gamma um, of, and then Y, absolute value of Y minus D over 2. And so this is going to be for the case where y is greater than or equal to d over 2. So that's outside. So the way to think about this is that inside the guide, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have a sinusoidally oscillating field. But outside, in the cladding, your field is going to exponentially decay. We also need to define a couple of variables. So we can define kappa. And this is equal to k naught. And then here, this becomes n2 squared minus n effective squared. And then we can also define gamma. Gamma is equal to k naught. And then here, this becomes n effective squared minus n1 squared. And just to remember, that n1 and n2 are the refractive indices of the cladding and the guide layers, respectively. 